Hello and welcome. My name is Tony and I'm with the Everyday Counts program here in North Vancouver. So we have an hour together for accessible chair yoga, meaning that you're listening to me 10 to 15% of the time, but the rest of the time, that 85% of the time, you're listening to your body, you're listening to what feels good for you today. And if something doesn't feel right, then sit it out, come back to the breath, or follow your intuition and move like your body is comfortable doing. This is not Simon Says that I say something and you do it. It really is a choice, every movement, turning inside and noticing if you can change or adapt something to simply feel better in your body. There's no right and wrong here. So with that tucked away in the back of your mind, let's come to practice. Making sure that the chair you're on is stable and you've got a whole lot of space around you so you're not gonna be bumping yourself as you move. If you'd like to sit into the back of your chair, you can do that at any time. Otherwise, I encourage you to sit forward a little bit. That way we start to warm up and strengthen the muscles that hold our spine upright that help with our posture. Feet a comfortable distance apart and that'll be different for each and every one of us depending on how it feels for us. More or less knees over ankles so we get some stability. And then you can pick those toes up and wiggle them a little bit if you like or even pick the balls of the feet up and imagine stretching your feet long and wide. So we kind of wake up awareness to the soles of our feet. And then we'll take those toes all the way down to the floor. Pushing down a little bit into the surface underneath you, just to start to, again, wake up your awareness. Notice whereabouts your um, weight is in your feet, maybe in the heels and the toes maybe towards the outside or inside of the feet and see if you can even that out and notice how that feels and how it changes how your legs feel. We'll do the same thing with our seat, sitting deeply into our seat and you can do some movement if that feels good for you. And then we get connected downwards. So waking up the awareness of the seat that is supporting us and where it is in our body, we feel that support. It may be all the way down to the backs of your knees or just um, up to the tops of your thighs. Rooting downwards. So from the pelvis downwards, we're really connected down to the support underneath us. And that gives us the opportunity to lift up through the spine any amount. Lifting up through the spine, through the crown of our head, Rolling the shoulders back and down, widening and broadening the collarbones. And notice how this feels in your body. And like I said, you're listening to me a little bit at the time, but is there anything you can add here or change so it simply feels better for you? And once that's done, take a full breath in. Exhale, allow some softness to creep into your body. And we'll do that another three times. You're welcome to close your eyes. The more we soften our gaze and close our eyes, we get more of an inward journey. Most of our sensory input is through our eyes. If we turn that off, everything else gets amplified. Let the breath come back to a natural, easy breath when you're ready. And then check in and notice how you feel today, which is vital for moving forward into a practice. Because if you're tired and depleted, then you really need to take care of yourself and make sure that you do a little less. And if you're full of beans, then that's great. That means that you can go ahead for a full practice and add on where you feel that you're ready for that. And if you're somewhere in between, 
like most of us are, then we need to really fine tune that listening into our body, into our intuition as the practice continues. Starting to notice how your physical body feels. If there is tightness, tension, or discomfort anywhere. And again, super important for moving forward into your practice. Because if there's something that's tender today, you just need to make sure that as you move, you're taking care of that part. And if there is any tension, and there usually is, is there anything you can do or offer yourself to soften that tension? Maybe if you change up how you're sitting, some of that tension dissolves. And you can always use your breath to change the tension too. Imagine on an inhale, you're bringing your breath to whatever area feels tense and tight. And on that exhale, imagine the breath dissolving and softening that area, wherever it is. And then we simply notice our breath today in this moment, noticing the length of it, the quality of it, without judgment, simply being curious. And smoothing the inhale just a little bit deeper and steadying the exhale so it gets just a little longer. And today I want you to consider the breath like a wave. The inhale is the rising of the wave, and the exhale is the falling of the wave. So if you imagine a wave in the deep ocean and how they rise and fall and rise and fall, imagine, sense, or feel that with your breath. So the inhale is the lifting, and the exhale is the flowing, the ebbing and flowing. And for those of you who are not visual, just follow the breath all the way up to the inhale, top of the inhale, and all the way back down to the exhale. You might even feel it in your body, that wave of breath. There's a lifting up through the shoulders, up through the upper chest in particular on the inhale. And then on the exhale, there's a softening, kind of like a sigh. Notice if you can feel that wave of breath in your body an expansion of the inhale, and a softening and a letting go of the exhale. You might even listen to the sound of your breath here as it rises and falls. And see however you're following your breath today, if you can smooth and steady that breath out. as best as you can. There's not a right and wrong and we all breathe differently and every day is different. Be gentle with yourself. Inhaling and exhaling. Nice. And with those waves of breath, that's what we'll keep coming back to today. And the waves of breath are in your own rhythm. So just get familiar with them and allow the breath to be the primary goal or the primary focus today and allow the movement just to come along and follow the breath. So when you're ready, Tune into that breath, and if there's any hardness that is built up in your body, focusing on the breath, see if you can soften and let that go so we become this soft reception for the breath. A wave of breath coming in and out, always changing and adapting everything, including the breath, to suit you today. And that's where the listening comes in. I'm 
those that language from the body from your intuition can come in sensations it can come in mindful flashes of insight like that doesn't feel good to me or mm, i'm not sure about that listen to all those things it's about really getting quiet with yourself and at any point in the practice i do recommend just softening your gaze or closing your eyes if you feel stable and steady on your chair even doing most of the practice, if not all of it with your eyes closed, will give you a great idea of what your body needs. So when you're ready, we root down through our feet and our seat. Wave of breath, steady and smooth, as smooth as we can make it. We reach up through the spine, lifting up through the crown of the head. And the wave of breath is still the same. Collarbones widen and the shoulders soften. Wave of breath. And once we're here, if there's anything you need to do to find even more ease, go ahead and do that at any time. And then with the very tip of your nose, in the air in front of you, we'll start to create figure of eights. Start small. Follow the wave of breath. your rhythm. You don't need to match anybody else's. And again, the invitation is always there to close your eyes if that feels safe and stable. Notice where you feel this in your body. Get curious about what signals your body is giving you about the movement you're offering it. You can allow those figure of eights to get bigger, to get smaller, to rest if that feels better. Notice if the rest of your body is coming along for the journey and try and keep that upper body still so the movement is isolated into the neck. Be gentle with yourself. And when you're ready, we'll pause and go back in the opposite direction. And this might feel a little awkward. We always do our favorite direction, the smoothest direction first. Where do you feel this in your body? Is doing less feeling better? Can you smooth it out even more? Another couple here, you can always pause, you can always rest early. And at the end of that exhale, we'll come back to center, rooting to rise, steady breath. We'll take that right hand down beside us, figure of eights with the shoulder. And if figure of eights don't feel good for you, then circles or lifting up and down. Always give yourself permission to change things to suit your body and your needs. Yoga is an internal experience. We're not trying to achieve something from the outside in. It's the other way around. As big or as small a movement as you like, try and keep that isolated in the right shoulder rather than bringing the whole body along with you. But again, do what suits you. Building that awareness to what it is that you need. When you're ready, we'll pause and take those figure of eights around in the opposite direction. Go inside, notice where you feel this. Is there something you can change to feel better for you? Offering yourself the opportunity to adapt to your needs not to adapt to what somebody else is telling you. Another couple here, unless you're resting. And then we'll go back with the right hand down. Left hand dangles, soften the shoulders. Again, we've got the broadness across the collarbones and we've got figure of eights in the left shoulder. And this may feel 
more or less challenging on this side. Just be curious. No judgment here, no going into stories as to what happened in your shoulder or on this side of your body. Tune into all those little signals that you get and adapt and adjust things to be gentle and kind to yourself. And often that's one of the hardest things that we do is actually admit what it is that we need and adjust to that. Going around in the opposite direction when you're ready. Ultimately, this practice of listening to what it is that you need on your yoga mat is a great place to start. And then ultimately, we try and take that off the mat and into our life. meeting our needs, regardless of what the world is telling us around us that we should or should not be doing. And choosing for yourself. Bigger or smaller movements, but see if you can smooth those out. Mm -hmm. One more, unless you're resting. And then we come back to center. Mm -hmm. Rooting to rise, we've still got those waves of breath. So if you've forgotten about the breath, come back to that. Rising and falling, that steady, free-flowing breath. Just as much ease, just as much effort. And then we'll take the elbows in towards our waist and bring the hands just cupped in soft fists. We're not clenching at all. And then on an inhale, we're going to draw that right elbow back up. And then over, let the body come with you as it comes over. The left elbow will come back, up on an inhale and over on an exhale. So it's almost like if I put my knuckles together, not that you need to do that, it's almost as if I'm drawing big figure of eights with my elbows. So when you're ready, inhaling up, exhaling across, inhaling up, exhaling across. Now this movement does not have to be big. It may feel very different one side to the other. So again, accommodate for that. Focus on the wave of breath guiding you. The, the movement is always secondary to the breath. Keeping as much or as little movement as feels good for you. The add-on here is to draw in towards your belly. So we get a rounding in the spine. And it's almost like we're swimming and we're getting this wideness across the back body. Notice how that feels. Slow the movement to the breath. And notice if there's a particular area that feels really challenging for you, slow that area down, maybe back off the size of the movement if the breath is halting or you're holding your breath. So we make sure that the breath are those fluid waves of breath. And don't worry about needing to rest. That's taking care of your needs. Nice. We've got another three on either side. You can stay for as long as you like, of course, and you can always rest early. What is it your body is telling you it needs? More or less, one more movement. And then when you're ready, we're coming all the way back up to center. Follow the breath and notice simply how your body feels. In fact, tune into your back body and notice how your back body feels. Elbows come in, soft fists again. We're going to take that right elbow over towards the left in front of us, going the opposite way. On the inhale, the elbow comes up, back, and on the exhale, it's coming down. So same movement, but we're opening up from the front body this side. Keep the spine neutral to start with, so the movement is only in the shoulders, and that may be enough for you. The movement can be small. 
It can be bigger. You can get your forearms involved if that feels good to you. And then the add-on here, if you want to add more and the breath is still flowing in those waves, those soft waves, lift up through the heart so we get an extension in the spine, a slight arch in the back. And then we're opening up through the whole front body, more or less from the pubic bone all the way spreading through the, um, all the muscles in the front across the pectorials and open opening up into the arms, chin drawn in a little, back of the head comes back a little so we're not jutting our chin out so the breath stays that easy wave. Notice where you feel this, again tune inwards, close your eyes if that feels safe to you. Is there anything you can adjust or adapt here in your body to simply make it feel more yummy for you. And that's different for each of us. We're all put together differently. Give yourself permission to move in your own way. Nice, another two either side. Or resting if you prefer. You might even notice some clicks and clacks in places. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, we'll come all the way back to center. Any movement you need to release tension, go ahead and do that. Our feet are rooted, our seat is rooted, and we're lifting from there, coming into seated cat and cow. So our hands stay resting where they're comfortable. On an inhale, we draw the hands back towards the pelvis, open up through the heart, and draw the elbows back towards us. You can even draw the shoulder blades back towards each other if you like. And we get, again, we've been here, when we opened up through our arms, we've got extension through the spine, wide front body. That's the inhale. On the exhale, fingertips come towards the knees, rounding through the shoulders, drawing the belly button in like somebody just scooped out our belly. And that's the exhale. Inhale and exhale. Gently does it. Again, tune inwards. Where does this feel really good in your body? Where do you need to be cautious and careful of? Can you allow yourself to flow a little more easily through the whole movements, allowing that wave of the inhale to draw you forward and that exhale to draw you backwards? If you want to add on from here, the chin comes up on the inhale, Chin comes down on the exhale. Same with the pelvic tilts. On the inhale, we're tilting the pelvis forward as the tail comes out behind us. And on the exhale, we're curling the tail, sitting over onto the back of the pelvis. And that will bring in the lower back. And then the chin will bring in the cervical spine, the neck. If this feels enough for you, then stay here, breathing with that wave of breath. Allow the breath to guide the movement. If you want to add on, inhaling, arms up, exhaling, sweep the arms down, maybe back by the hips, maybe even back behind you. Inhaling and exhaling. Hands can be as wide or as close together as you like. You can even imagine holding on to a beach ball here as we inhale and exhale, moving through the spine. And if the hands simply are too much and take away from the mindfulness of moving the spine, then bring the hands back to support. No right and wrong here. And you can always simply imagine moving if this is not feeling comfortable in your body or you're not sure. <laughs> and if you want to stay in a particular place and breathe into one part of your body, you can go ahead and do that. We've got another three breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. Staying for the last exhale, and you're always welcome to take longer in any movement. And then we'll come back to center. Big breath in, exhale it out. And then all we're gonna do is come back to that wave of breath, rooting down to rise from there. Hands coming over the heart in a 
kind of soft cross, lifting up through the crown of your head. That's the inhale and the exhale. We're gonna come over towards the right, inhaling to center, exhaling left, wave of breath. Inhale is the rising, the exhale is the softening. Now bringing the shoulders over the hips more or less, you can draw the chin in one more time just to keep that breath nice and easy so we're not opening up the chest and the breath doesn't get um, squished in the throat there. As we come to one side, notice what's happening with the other hip. The chances are it's getting lighter. So see if you can ground down through both sides of the pelvis and continue the movement and notice how that changes things up. And that just means that we're focusing the movement through the spine instead of getting the lower body involved as well. Which is not a bad thing at all. And if that feels better for you, do what feels right for you. Inhaling and exhaling. Next time, if you want to, to build some strength here, you come over to the right. We'll stay there, three breaths, lifting up through the crown of the head, rooting through our feet, both sides of the pelvis, and breathing into that left side of the body. Tune in, Wits. Notice what your body is telling you. You can stay here or we'll lift up and go to the other side, pulsing or staying three breaths. Rooting through your feet, both sides of your pelvis, lifting through the crown of the head. So we're finding length rather than a whole lot of compression on the left side. Breath is like a wave coming and going easily and flowing. And when you're ready, when you're done with the last exhale, we'll come all the way back up to center. Hands come down to support. Any movement you need to release tension, go ahead and do that. And then we're going to be coming into a twist here. So hands coming towards each other, palms, or you can take the little soft fists, thumbs on the top. We're going to send those arms out at a comfortable distance for you. We're going to be turning to the left to start with, and I'm going to turn to one side so you can see what I'm doing. So bringing the hands out in front of you, or you can lengthen the hands, but we're keeping those shoulder blades um, towards each other. The collarbones are wide here. So if you notice, when you bring your hands forward, you're getting this curving through the front of the chest. Then bend the elbows a little, just to widen and keep that broadness of the collarbones. Soft fists, so palms towards each other. This is the inhale. On the exhale, we're drawing that left elbow back like we're pulling the bow of a bow and arrow. And then we're coming back to center on the inhale. Exhale, we're drawing that elbow back. Allow the gaze to follow with that hand, even the elbow, if it's there for you, if it feels okay in the neck. If it doesn't, then keep the gaze central. What we're doing here is thoracic rotation. So the hips are grounded down and through the chair. That right hip is not creeping forward. So the movement, once again, is through the spine. Inhaling and exhaling. Taking that gaze over the left shoulder if it feels good for you. The breath is guiding you, the wave of breath. Inhale and exhale. If you need to drop the hands down a little, excuse me, if you need to drop the hands down a little, then go ahead and do that. You can stay here pulsing, or if you'd like to, next time we draw back with the left elbow, we'll stay three breaths. Pulling the right hand forward, left elbow comes back, so we get length, broadness across the collarbones, gaze over that left shoulder, any amount, right hip is drawn back so we're not talking through the pelvis and the wave of breath is still present. One more breath here, stay for the exhale, inhale to center and we're going to swoop those arms forward and back releasing any tension. Okay, 
Same thing, other side. And if you need to take a rest here before you come to the other side, go ahead and do that. Hands come towards each other, palms, soft fists. You can take the hands as far out in front of you as you like, but keep the broadness of the collarbones. This is the inhale, wave of breath is still there. On the exhale, we draw that bow back, elbow comes back any amount, inhaling back to center. Keeping the gaze central or start to turn towards the right any amount, making sure that that left hip is not sneaking forward. Inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. You can always rest. You can always do every other one, taking that gaze back behind you as much as you want to. Notice what's happening in your pelvis, keeping the pelvis neutral and keeping the movement through the spine. Wave of breath is still there. You can stay here pulsing. Or the next time we draw the right hand back, we're staying three breaths. Push the left hand forward, draw the right elbow back. Take your gaze to where it's comfortable. Left hip is drawn back, the wave of breath is present. Steady and smooth. If you're holding your breath or the breath is getting jagged, do less. Stay for the last exhale. And then we'll inhale forward. Hands come down, roll through the shoulders. Any movement you need, go ahead and do that to release any tension. Nicely done. Okay, from here. If you're sitting into the back of your chair, Consider coming forward, but only if you feel stable. Rooting to rise. Steady breath. I want you to imagine through the crown of your head, through your heart, and down through the center of your pelvis, there's a rod, like an iron rod. And we're keeping the upper body steady. So we did a whole lot of movement with the cat and cow movements through what we've done already. Now I want you to imagine that the spine is still and steady. This time we're hinging from the hips, very much like a door, hinge opening and closing rather than a rounding. This is the inhale. On an exhale, we're simply gonna move our shoulders forward, inhaling up, exhaling forward. So if you see it from the side, this is the inhale, on the exhale, I'm simply coming forward. The hands are supporting me any amount. As opposed to rounding and coming forward. Inhaling and exhaling is not gonna take very much. As you come forward, consider drawing the belly in towards the spine somewhat. So we get a drawing in, knitting of the transverse abdominals, which are kind of like a corset all the way around our lower spine. Drawing the belly in towards the spine just a little. We're still breathing, remember? So we don't want to hold our breath. We want the breath to be flowing because otherwise there's no point in doing the movement. When you find that you're coming to your edge, where the breath is just enough for you, that's your sweet spot, coming forward and back. Nice. If you want to add on, consider hovering the hands and notice how that feels. If it does not feel stable for you, then keep the hands down. If you want to, we'll take the hands, thumbs to the sky. On an inhale, elbows in towards the waist when we inhale. On an exhale, when we're coming forward, send the fingertips forward any amount. And with the weight of the arms coming forward, we're bringing more strengthening into the lower back. Keep the hands as wide as it feels to broaden across the collarbones. And then of course, change and adapt this for your body. Belly's still drawn in, and that wave of breath is still there. If the body feels easy here, 
You're welcome to stay. If you want to add on next time we come forward to strengthen, we're staying. Three breaths, broaden through the collarbones, even if that means widening through the hands. And stay with that wave of breath. Any hardening in the body, see if you can soften. Notice where you're holding tension. See if you can do anything to release it. We want just as much effort, but we also want the ease. Staying for the last exhale. And then on the inhale, we're being drawn back to center. Take a breath. Exhale it out. And just check in with yourself. Notice how you're doing. Notice if you're listening to yourself or you're listening to me more. Give yourself permission to do what it is that you need. Okay, we're going back in the opposite direction. So again, if you're sitting into the back of your chair, you might want to come forward to give yourself a little bit of space, but above all else, you feel stable and secure here. This is the inhale, head, heart and hips in one line. Hinging from the hip crease. This is the inhale on the exhale. We're just bringing the shoulders back any amount. It's not going to take very much for those transverse abdominals to start to kick in. You might even feel your pubic bone and your belly button, the muscles in between there, start to activate. You can draw the belly gently in towards the spine, just like we did earlier, to um, wake the transverse abdominals up a little and it doesn't take very much for your sh the um, upper body coming back it doesn't take more than a couple of I guess that was a car outside it doesn't take much more than a couple of centimeters to start to activate those transverse abdominals that's because we're taking our um, weight backwards from our center of gravity you're welcome to stay here, pulsing forward and back. If you want to add the arms, this will actually make it easier, not harder this time. Thumbs to the sky, collarbones wide. This is the inhale and the exhale. You can just come up and down with the arms out. And if that feels like a lot, then bend the elbows. With the weight of the arms forward, you may notice that you can come back a little further. Collarbones wide, the shoulder blades are drawn in towards each other along the back body and the wave of breath is still there. In fact, the wave of breath is the guidance for the movement. You're welcome to stay here pulsing. If you want to add on and start to add strength into this, we're coming back and we're staying. Chin drawn in a little, gazes up towards maybe where the ceiling meets the wall and the breath is steady, a steady wave coming in and out. If the breath is not there, come up a little further. If it feels like you're, um, that you have more capacity, then bring your shoulders back. If the feet are getting light, root them down. Steady breath, wave of breath. You've got more or less one more breath here. And then on the inhale, up we come. Hands come down, big breath in, exhale it out. From here, we're going to come use that um, head, heart and hips in one line. We're going to bring that into a twist. So hands coming on the thighs, rooting to rise and the breath is that wave of breath. On the exhale, we're coming forward, staying, hands on the thighs. If this feels enough for you, then you're going to stay here. If you can come down to forearms, then you can do that. If coming down to forearms means you want to take your legs a little wider to make space for your body, go ahead and do that too. Now, as we're forward, however you are, belly draws in towards the spine and you might notice kind of like a firming up through the lower back and through that kind of corset area of the lower body. Great place to stay, right here. Bringing a twist into it, we're gonna take that right hand over onto the left thigh. Left hand comes to the side or even reaching back towards the chair if you want to. Collarbones are wide. 
Even if the hands, you're up on your hands here, not your forearms, same thing. From here, draw and roll back the left shoulder, turning towards the left hand side. Option to stay here. Option to slide the forearm over onto the left thigh, turning the palm up, widening through the collarbones. Great place to stay here. Get firm through the feet. Wave of breath, the belly's still drawn in. And then the option is to slide that forearm any amount over onto the left thigh. Roll the left shoulder back. Hand can be anywhere that's comfortable for you or even resting on your lower back. And we're twisting from there. The amount of twist is neither here nor there. What we want is the pelvis downwards to be rooted and we're deepening or softening that twist from there. And we know what we need to do because the breath is a wave of breath. You can use the forearm or even elbow to the outside of that left thigh to give you leverage to come around a little more if you like. But be careful that you're not pushing too much and losing the breath. Every inhale, we lengthen, soften out of the twist. Exhale, decide whether you want to stay there, soften more, or deepen. We're not interested in more is better here. What we want is the flow of breath. Option to stay here. For the last three breaths, option to hover the hands wherever they are, Use the muscles of your spine to keep you here. Steady breath, three breaths. Gazing over that left shoulder, if it feels good for you, keeping that right hip drawn back. Staying for the last breath when you're ready. Hands come down to support and that right elbow comes back on the right thigh or hand. On an inhale, we lengthen and come back to center, and then we'll come all the way up. Same thing, other side. Depending on what's going on in your body, this may be more challenging or easier for you. Try and release expectations. Listen to what it is that you need here. Rooting to rise, wave of breath. And then the option is to come forward, long spine, Belly drawn in. Steady and smooth. Stay here. Come down onto forearms. Collarbones are wide here. Now the idea here is to keep the head, heart and hips in one line. Rather than jutting the hips, the, the front ribs forward, sorry, draw them in. So we get that again, that corseting. That's going to help us. Stay here. Left hand, right thigh. Great place to be, bringing that right hand back to where it's comfortable and you can twist from there with that support. Option to slide the forearm onto the right thigh. If the forearm is there, then the palm can turn up to widen through the collarbone there. Root through the feet, through the seat. Pelvis is not moving with you. And then the inhale, we come out a little. Exhale, soften or deepen the twist. What is it that you need here? can bring that right hand on the back of your pelvis, the back of your chair, rolling that shoulder open and stay with the breath. Inhaling, exhaling, allow the breath to move with you. Inhaling and exhaling. If you, are want, if you want to stay here and this is enough, then stay. If you want to add on, see if you can stay wherever you are in the twist, hover the hand so we're building strength. Breath is that wave of breath, glancing over that right shoulder as much as feels comfortable. Steady and easy. Last breath here. Stay for the exhale. And then come back to support and we inhale up. Nicely done. Taking the feet wide, 
You're going to soften through all those muscles, especially those TA muscles um, that we've just been activating. So feet go as wide as feel comfortable here. Hands are supporting you. And on the inhale, we roll the ribs forward. And on the exhale, we're rolling them back. So we get big barrel rolls through the ribs. Mm -hmm. And again, come forward or back on your chair, depending on the support you need and depending on how stable you feel. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Listen to what your body is telling you. If there's anything you can do here to change things so it simply feels better. Get your head, your neck, your shoulders, your pelvis involved or not. And then when you're ready, we'll go around in the opposite direction. Smooth, just like the breath feels smooth. Mm -hmm. Get curious here. If you change things up, does it feel better? Another few in this direction. And then when you're ready, coming back to center. Heel toeing the legs in towards each other and come back to that wave of breath. Steady in, steady out, the rise and fall. And with 50% of your awareness on the breath, coming and going, check in and notice how you're doing. If you're giving yourself permission to do what it is that you need, and if you are, that's fantastic. Most of us are practicing that. That's why yoga is called a practice. We do it some of the time and it feels good and others, other times we don't and that's okay. But the more we tune in to what it is that we need, offering ourselves what it is that we need, meeting our needs in a way that only we can because only you know what's going on in your body. You can stay here and rest a little bit. If you want to stay in the chair and do everything, I'm going to come down to the floor now. If you want to come uh, stay in the chair, then everything we do in the, on the floor can be done in the chair. So first of all, we're going to be circling through the hip. We're going to be circling through the ankle. And then we're going to be cycling through. And then from there, coming into a twist. So everything we do on the floor, you can do in the chair. Otherwise, I'm going to meet the rest of you down on the floor. You can pause this video for this to ha that to happen so you can set up what it is that you need to make sure you have a blanket or an eye pillow for your relaxation at the end if you need to. So from here, we're coming to lie on our backs, knees to the sky, feet to the floor. And if you need any more support underneath you to soften, the earth, then please go ahead and do that. From here, drawing the right knee in towards you, giving yourself a little hug. And then from here, we're just going to circle through the ankle there. I'm going to lengthen my legs so you can see. Circle in one direction and then circle through in the opposite direction. From here, Keeping that left foot on the floor, right hand, right knee, and we're going to circle through the right knee. Now, if this feels stable enough, you're welcome to lengthen through that left leg. And you can always take that left arm out beside you or in a cactus to steady yourself some more. But again, play with all these things and figure out what feels best in your body. And if you feel stable and steady enough, you can allow that movement to happen without the support of your hand on your knee. But more is not better here. We're tuning into what it is that feels good in our hip. As big or as small as circles as you like, sometimes a little flex in that right ankle will help you feel a little more control through the hip. 
Notice which direction you're going in. And then we're switching it up and going in the opposite direction. We did everything in the chair from the upper body and now we're getting down into the lower body. Through the hips, we've done the ankles. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the chair, this is more challenging because gravity is against you. So rest when you need to. And then we're coming back to center, giving yourself a little hug here. Now, you can keep that left leg long if you like, or you can bend that left leg. This will give you a little more support. Arms come into a T or a cactus, whatever feels good for you. And then from there, we're cycling with that right leg as if we're on a one-legged cycle that somehow we would be doing upside down. Keep the movement small. We're getting into the knee here, getting into that extension through the leg and compression. The leg does not have to be straight or you can bring that heel as close towards the floor as you want to. Inhaling and exhaling. Now, all that transverse abdominal work we've just done, this is where it comes into play. The muscles have already been activated. You can draw that belly in towards the spine a little, snuggle the lower back a little in towards the mat, but keeping that nice, natural curve in the spine and that'll be different for each of us so don't feel like it has to be a certain way notice which direction you're going in this is normally the regular cycling way and then we're going to go back in the opposite direction so it's almost like a pushing away through the heel a little more inhaling and exhaling and the option is if you do not need that left foot on the floor, you can always lengthen the leg if you want to, or if you're adding on, just lift the foot up from the floor and that's gonna give you a little less stability, so a little more challenging. The breath is that wave of breath. Mm -hmm. Inhaling and exhaling, wherever you are, listening to your body, and then when you're ready, we're gonna draw that right knee in towards you. From here, left leg goes long. You can shift the hips over towards the right if you like. That right arm and a T or a cactus. And we're bringing the right knee over towards the left into a twist. Support that right leg any amount that you need to on blocks, on a pillow, on a bolster. Anything that happens to be handy and firm and stable. And then you can take the gaze over the right shoulder if the right shoulder is rooted and grounded. Take those waves of breath here. Come back to imagining that ocean and the rise and fall of the breath. You can stay here for as long as you like. You can play with whether that knee is um, up towards your chest or away from you, whether it's high towards the ceiling or towards the floor. Again, listening to what it is that your body needs here. When you're ready, gaze comes to center and the knee comes up too. Feet to the floor, knees to the sky, replace your pelvis to a central place. And then the left knee draws in here, give it a little hug, and then we circle through the ankle. One direction, the breath is that wave of breath and the movement is coming with the breath. So one circle to one cycle of breath. And we'll go back in the opposite direction. Always knowing that you can rest, imagine moving, or change the movement to suit you. When you're ready, we're taking a gentle flex in that left foot, left hand comes to the knee. Now the right knee can be bent, foot to the floor, you can extend that, or anything else that feels good. Again, bending that knee and winging it out towards the side, depending. Just play around, notice what you need. 
right arm is in a cactus or a T2, give you some stability and we're circling through that left knee, but it's really the hip that is moving here. Inhaling and exhaling that wave of breath. Imagine that movement moving with your breath, as big or as small as you like. You can release that hand if you feel like that's comfortable in your body and you're not pushing yourself. And we know we're not pushing because the breath will be steady and smooth. Notice which direction you're going in. And then we're gonna take it around in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Smoothing it out, making that movement work for your body. So this is not for you. Can you change it up? Can you pause? Can you rest? What is it that your body is asking of you now? We're going to bring that knee in towards us. Now you can keep that right leg long or you can keep that knee to the sky, feet to the floor. Arms come in a T or a cactus and we're cycling now. Keep it small, keep it easy. Try and bring smoothness to the movement. Again, it's got, we've got the trans abdominals drawing in here, belly in towards the spine, just gently. The breath is still flowing. And then the option is to extend that leg a little further up towards the sky and the heel, almost grazing the floor, but not quite. So it is a mindful movement. We're not throwing our body around in any way here. Noticing your breath and knowing what that sweet spot is for you. And then when you're ready, we're gonna take those around in the opposite direction. Adapt the size of the movement to your breath, to what feels good in your body. Give yourself permission to do what you need here. Inhaling and exhaling. Keeping the movement as smooth as you possibly can. There's no right and wrong here. We're all just figuring it out. All a work in progress. You can stay here, or we're gonna bring that left knee in towards us, give us a little hug. You can shift the hips over towards the left, you can extend out the right leg. Left knee comes over towards the right and a twist. The left shoulder stays grounded and that allows you to look over that left shoulder with support through the neck. You get to play here, change this, up, support yourself, change up the, um, the trajectory of that knee, whether it's higher, lower, towards the ceiling or towards your belly or away from you. Keep the breath easy, those waves of breath. And then when you're ready, Gaze comes to center, knee comes to center. Rearrange your pelvis. And then here we are coming into relaxation. So take those legs long, support underneath your body anywhere you need it. Take a blanket, an eye pillow, turn the lights off. Anything it is you need here for Shavasana, for relaxation. No amount of effort is too much here for you to find a spot where you can relax. That may not be on your back, it may be on your side, it may be on your belly, it may be on your bed, not on the floor. It may be in a chair. So take what it is that you need here. Again, no right and wrong. Give yourself permission to do what it is that you need to meet your own needs. Settle in to wherever it is that you've chosen. Notice all the places you're supported underneath your body. 
all the places your body touches support trust that support and allow your bones to sink deeper into it Allow every breath to sink you deeper. Notice if you're giving yourself permission to really rest here or if you're simply going through your grocery list or to-do list. Allow every moment that you're here to feel more and more peaceful allowing thoughts to slide away. Allow the breath to be easy. And take all of your awareness inwards as if you could draw away from the outside world. Let your sensory input soften. And taking your awareness to a place inside of you which feels like the very center of you. And if no place arises, simply pick a place. No right and wrong, and it can change all the time different to each of us. And that place inside of you that never changes, regardless of age and experience and the outside world. Connecting to that deeper wisdom within you. That place that when we get quiet enough, it gets a little louder. It's a place that's familiar to all of us, but a lot of the time we don't take the opportunity to listen. stay here for as long as you like simply tune my voice out and allow my words to drift over you but not disturb you from allowing your awareness to rest where it needs to and if you want to finish your practice And then once again, become aware of your whole body from the toes to the crown of your head to your fingertips. Notice where your body is supported here. And start to notice your breath. And start to breathe in a mindful way that feels simply better for you. Expanding and softening that wave of breath, bringing you back into the space you're in, into your body. And allow that wave of breath 
to ripple through your fingers and toes into movement. And taking your time to move in an organic way, again, listening to your body. What is it that it wants to do here to awaken? And either staying where you are for a few moments, bringing your hands into heart center or coming to a place to finish and to complete your practice. Hands resting in a comfortable closing position, whatever that is for you. And again, you get to choose here. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. Another big breath in. Exhale, chin down towards your chest. And just notice what it feels like to have given yourself permission to meet your needs. Imagine, imagine doing more of that on a day-to-day -day basis. Not doing what the world outside tells you to do, but really tuning in and deciding for yourself, choosing for yourself to meet your needs. Maybe setting an intention to offer yourself that going forward, even just once a day. I thank you for practicing with me from my heart to yours. Namaste.